Eddie's grandpa was something special. His garage was huge, but there was no room to park a car inside it. This was because it was full of stuff. Boxes, crates, drums, and bottles. And each one was neatly labeled and filled with all manner of things. There was a jar full of brass screws, another full of elastic bands. One box had short pieces of wood neatly stacked in it, while the box next to it was full of smooth pebbles. There was a crate with neatly ordered offcuts of electrical wire, and another crate full to the brim with screwdrivers. It was an Aladdin's cave of fascinating things, and Eddie's grandpa needed all of it, because he was an inventor. What have you made this week? asked Eddie when he arrived on the weekend for his visit. As always, he'd stop by the kitchen to get Grandpa a fresh mug of coffee and a cookie from Grandma, not to mention a couple of cookies for himself. Grandpa took the refreshments and grinned excitedly at his grandson. Wowzers, have I got something amazing to show you, Eddie, he said, sweeping his hand to indicate his workbench. On it was what looked like a camera. That didn't mean it was still a camera. Eddie's grandpa liked to turn things into other things if their shape suited his needs. It looks interesting, said Eddie. Eddie didn't see many cameras, as most people these days use their phones to take a photo, but this was definitely, at some point in its life, a camera. There were some weird thingamajigs and doodars sticking out of it. Eddie was quite sure most cameras didn't normally have them. Oh, it's interesting, all right, said his grandpa proudly. I call it the camera unobscura. So it's a camera, Eddie confirmed. Oh, it's so much more than a camera, Eddie, insisted his grandpa. This camera can take pictures of things that the human eye cannot see. Oh, amazing, said Eddie, although he sounded more confused than he did amazed. Uh, like what sort of things? Well, said his grandpa, waving a finger about. There's ultraviolet light and infrared and the color pimp tickle. Pimp tickle? blurted out Eddie. There's no such color as pimp tickle. I've never heard of it. Oh, of course you haven't heard of it. Nobody's seen it before. Well, apart from me with my new camera answered Grandpa somewhat cheekily. Would you like to have a go with it? Oh, yes, said Eddie with a big grin. Having a go with Grandpa's inventions was the best part of the week, and that included the times they accidentally exploded, imploded, fell to bits, caught fire, or caused all the bananas in the neighbor's house to grow legs and stand on the ceiling. What do I have to do? Grandpa picked up the camera on Obscura and held it in front of Eddie. This button takes the photo. This button untakes the photo and puts it back again. Use the button to focus and this button to zoom in and out. There is a fold-out screen here so you can see what you've taken. Don't press the yellow button because I can't remember what that does and it might be something dangerous. That was a lot of information all at once, but luckily, Eddie was used to it. He usually just worked things out for himself anyway. Carefully taking the camera on Obscura, he lifted it up. It wasn't as heavy as it looked. Okay, Grandpa, I'm ready. Off you go, laughed Grandpa as Eddie headed off. I look forward to seeing what you cannot see. The biggest problem with taking photos of things that the human eye couldn't see was that Eddie couldn't see the things he was supposed to be taking photos of. So instead, he decided to just take a picture of Grandma and Grandpa's garden. He chose a patch of flowers, focused the lens, and clicked. His first photo appeared immediately on the fold-out screen. Whoa, said Eddie, a stunned look on his face. This looks amazing! What you got there, Eddie? Asked Grandma, coming up behind him. Oh, are those my flowers? Yeah, said Eddie, nodding vigorously. But look at all those extra colors! The flowers in front of them were yellows and pinks, 
but on the fold-out screen, there were dark purple patterns, too. Oh, I think the extra colors are ultraviolet, explained Grandma. We can't see ultraviolet, but bees can, and it directs them to the nectar at the center of the flower. Oh, that's so cool, said Eddie. I'm going to try and take more pictures like this. Off he went, taking photos of the plants and flowers. Near the back of the garden, he spied Django, the neighbor's cat, half hidden amongst the strawberry plants. This seemed like the perfect opportunity to use the camera on Obscura again. He lifted it up, zoomed in a bit on the cat, and took the picture. But when Eddie checked the screen, there was no cat there at all. Instead, a little green man with pointy ears and silver clothes stared back at him. Had he made a mistake? He checked the position of Django before him against the little green man in the photo. They were in exactly the same place. According to the photo, the little green man was Django the cat. Django, said Eddie slowly, are you an alien? The cat, who up until now had ignored Eddie completely, suddenly sat up and stared right at him, a look of great worry upon his feline face. Yikes, said the cat and ran for it. Stop, shouted Eddie, trying to keep up, but the cat was just too fast. He lost it within seconds. Eddie spent a moment searching between the flowers, behind the shed, and even under some plant pots, but nothing. He couldn't see the cat anywhere. Hmm, thought Eddie, as a sly idea formed in his mind. I can't see him, but the camera on Obscura takes photos of things I can't see. So he held up the camera and took a photo of the garden. The screen didn't reveal any sign of Django, so he turned to the side and photographed a different angle, including the neighbor's fence. This time, the screen revealed something astounding. The fence wasn't in the photo at all, allowing Eddie to see what was quite clearly a flying saucer. So you really are an alien, Eddie whispered as he crept up to the fence. There was a loose board at the fence's base, no doubt where a cat could easily slip in and out, and it was just large enough for Eddie to squeeze through. The garden wasn't nearly as neat and tidy as his grandparents, with tall weeds and briar patches, and no sign of a flying saucer. But what there was, sitting amongst the overgrown plants before him, was an old broken hot tub. A quick photo with the camera on Obscura confirmed his suspicion. The hot tub was the flying saucer in disguise. He gave the side of the hot tub a knock with his knuckles. Hey, Django, I know you're in there, said Eddie, and I know you're an alien. Can we talk? For a moment, nothing happened. Then one of the hot tub's panels hissed open, and a very miserable-looking cat walked out. One moment, said the cat, and he tapped his front wrist with a paw. Instantly, the illusion was shattered, the cat was gone, and the little green alien was revealed. How did you discover me? asked Django sadly. With this, said Eddie, holding up the camera on Obscura. It takes photos of the things that you can't see. Ah, oh, said Django the alien. There was always a risk that studying your grandpa would get me caught. You're studying grandpa? repeated Eddie with disbelief. Of course, said Django. He's one of the cleverest beings in the universe. Grandpa? Really? Eddie spluttered. Yeah, his instant ice cube machine was a work of genius, said Django. That was a good one, admitted Eddie. But it took my eyebrows two weeks to grow back after I tried using it. Oh, yes, yes, said Django, dismissing Eddie's concerns with a wave of his little green hand. They sometimes need some tweaking to get them right, but the ideas themselves, well, they're sensational. If you think he's so great, why are you disguising yourself as a cat? Eddie asked. Are you spying on him? Spying? Me? No, said the alien, clearly both embarrassed and flustered. I, uh, uh, oh, what's the use? Yes, yes, I was spying on him. 
You've been stealing Grandpa's work and pretending it's yours, haven't you? Accused Eddie. The little green man nodded. Yes, he said meekly. Your grandpa's ideas are great, but sometimes he lacks the technology or, or parts to make them truly great. Unlike him, I'm no good at thinking up ideas, but I'm really good at polishing a good idea into a great one. Come on, said Eddie suddenly. You're coming with me. Where? said Django, looking worried. Not to see your grandpa. I'd feel awful. Well, I think you should, said Eddie. And I think it would be really good for the both of you. Understandably, Eddie's grandpa was shocked to discover he was being spied on. But he didn't get cross or angry. Not even a little bit. So you're saying my inventions are really popular out there in the universe? He asked. Oh, yes, nodded Django. You've changed people's lives. On most planets, your lost thing detector is a must in every home. Oh, amazing, said Grandpa quietly. But my lost thing detector never worked properly. The batteries kept falling out and the quantum possibility sensor tended to melt. Oh, I took care of that, said Django. Once I understood the concept, I got it working properly in no time. You did, said Grandpa delightedly. Oh, do tell me how. They fell into excited talking, with Grandpa pulling out various half-abandoned inventions and the pair of them talking animatedly about them. It was the beginning of a brilliant and very successful partnership, with the two of them working together to create stupendous machines that sold in their trillions. And their most popular product? The Camera Unobscura. It remained Eddie's favorite too. He continued to take amazing photos of unseen things, although none of them quite topped discovering that the neighbor's cat was an alien spy. Well, until yesterday, that is. That's when Eddie took a photo of an ordinary tree, only to find, on the fold-out screen of the camera on Obscura, a door in the tree's trunk. Naturally, Eddie had to have a look what was on the other side. And what he found there, well, that was really amazing. And he's got the photos to prove it. The end. So that you don't miss a single episode, just click that subscribe button.